there we go. All right, so thank you everybody for, for coming to our webinar today. Um, as more people come in, that'll be great, but we will get started to respect everybody's time. I know it's a busy time and night for parents of K to five fifth graders. So it's, um, it's thank you for taking the time out of your evening for doing this. I'm Ann Lovejoy. I'm the principal at Eight Corners School, and I'm gonna do some quick round of uh, introductions for everybody who's on the, um, the screen here, and then I'll share my screen to start the presentation. We have Kelly Crosby, who's the principal at Wentworth. We have uh, Monique Culbertson, who is an interim principal at Blue Point, but she's also our director of curriculum and assessment for the whole district. We have Jen Humphreys, who's the principal at Pleasant Hill. We have Molly Zeman, who is the K-2 school counselor. And Andrew Shepard is joining us from SARSM, and he is here to help um, support our mission and state mandate to um, provide this education to staff and to students. So thank you, Andrew, for giving us your time. So I will now share my screen and we'll go through the first couple of slides. I can make them go. All right, so our objectives tonight, as you can see, we're introducing ourselves and our SARS and partners. And um, we're just here to help parents um, and anybody else who's on the call to understand the state mandate, what actually we will be teaching and how to support what is taught. At the end, we'll give opportunity for questions. The mission of the Scarborough Schools has um, remained the same for the last five or six years at least. And uh, we always wanna provide a safe and inclusive learning environment for each and every student is empowered to be a resilient lifelong learner who's prepared to engage as a contributing member of society. That's a lot. So we have, thankfully we have 13 years to do it. All right, so I'm gonna turn um, the presentation now over to Andrew. Andrew, he um, works for SARSM, the Sexual Assault Response Services of Southern Maine. And they are a huge organization that does a lot of great things. And this is just one small part. So Andrew, go ahead, you want me to? Um... Yeah, let's, um, so I can share my screen. Oh, oh and let's... screen. Oh, so not the video, but... Um... The live presentation. Do I have screen sharing capabilities? Let's see. Yes, I do. All right. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. All right. So, hi, everyone. Thanks for having me today. Um, my name is Andrew Shepard. I'm the Director of Education and Community Engagement for Sexual Assault Response Services of Southern Maine, or SARSM, as we're also known. Um, who we are, we're the local sexual assault support center for York and Cumberland counties. Um, we provide survivor support, advocacy, and also sexual violence prevention education services for York and Cumberland counties. We're a part of a coalition called the Maine Coalition Against Sexual Assault, which makes up seven centers across the state. So if folks live in other counties in the state of Maine, there are other centers that provide similar resources and services for folks. Our services are completely free and 100% confidential with the exception of mandated reporting. Um, and we also support and work with survivors and anyone who's been impacted by sexual violence, concerned others, parents and caregivers, nurses, school districts, and anyone who wants to get involved with ending the impacts of sexual violence in our communities. Um, we have six core programs at SARSM. I'm gonna highlight a few today and you can find more information on our services on our website at www.sarsm.org. Um, the ones that I would really like to highlight with you all today is our sexual assault response team. This is a team of advocates that can work with anybody who's been impacted by sexual violence and or their caregiver. So if a child has been experienced child sexual abuse, we can provide advocacy and support for specifically the criminal and civil legal systems, provide access to mental health and medical resources, as well as support folks in the educational system after abuse has occurred. Um, we also have a 24 seven helpline that anyone can access for emotional support, to ask questions or get access to our resources. And you can call our local helpline to get connected to that sexual assault response team. 
We also have our children's advocacy centers like that I always like to highlight, particularly for parents. This is a great resource that we offer in conjunction with um, the Department of Health and Human Services, um, where we provide trauma-informed forensic interviews to any child who has experienced child sexual abuse. It is an expectation by all district attorneys in the state of Maine that all law enforcement agencies are going through children's advocacy centers for the investigative process. So that way, no child who has experienced child sexual abuse has to take the stand in the court of law for any investigative or um, court proceeding. Lastly, I want to um, mention our youth prevention and education program. This is the program that I run over at SARSM. This is a program that ends to um, that strives to end sexual violence before it occurs through education techniques and supporting the local school, school districts in York and Cumberland County. This includes supporting school districts and being com in compliance with the um, state mandate on child sexual abuse prevention and response which is what I'm here to talk to you all of you about today. So in um, 2015, the state legislature passed a law that required all um, pre-K through 12th grade public institutions to train all school personnel in child sexual abuse prevention and response, and also required for all pre um, K through fifth grade levels to implement a prevention education curriculum that helps to prevent child sexual abuse before it occurs. Um, this is also called the Maine Department of Education's model policy, um, it requires um, within that model policy, the child sexual abuse response and reporting procedures. So guidelines on how to have specific policies within the district, um, awareness trainings and prevention education for school personnel, um, age appropriate child sexual abuse prevention education for students, which the rest of the district is going to talk about further later on. Um, and then also um, resources, um, how to resource a victim of child sexual abuse and also support non-offending caregivers of a victim of child sexual abuse. This law requires for schools specifically two um, camps, as I like to call it. There's a curriculum, that prevention and education piece, and then also that training requirement for staff and school personnel. Starting with the training requirement, the training is required for all school personnel. So this means from educators that are working with students in the classrooms, all the way down to folks that are driving um, the bus, folks that are in um, the, um, Lunchroom, anybody that is staffed by um, the district has to be trained in this training every four years. This training is provided as delivered by a qualified instructor from guidelines from the Department of Education and also our state coalition. And it must be completed within six months of hire and updated every four years. All staff in the Scarborough School District have had this training and are qualified to be supporting all students in the district um, if a disclosure does occur, and also to implement the prevention education component of the law, um, which what must include um, the biggest one would be age appropriate education regarding physical and personal boundaries, including biologically accurate body terminology. This can be definitely daunting to some parents, um, you know, this requirement of the law. I always like to emphasize that this is not a sexualized requirement of content. The reason that this is put in place with the law is because of two biggest reasons. When children have these language skills, specifically when they have the language of anatomically correct body parts, including genitalia, they are less likely to experience child sexual abuse. And if a child has experienced child sexual abuse and has those language skills, they are much more likely to have success in a um, court of law if they are choosing to go through an investigative process. So that's why this is implemented as part of this law is because these language skills are a huge protective factor to ending sexual abuse and preventing child sexual abuse. Other components of this education are the identification of unsafe and uncomfortable situations, including a range of feelings, touches, or violations of physical boundaries. How can a child really assess um, safe and unsafe situations, big problems and little problems, and how to access a trusted adult when they experience those big problems? So this is another major component of the law, specifically around personal boundaries and personal body safety. How can a child verbalize no and how they are feeling if someone is crossing the boundaries and how can they access supports if they um, that no is not respected? Um, the last part of this is development of skills to support a friend who may be experiencing unsafe or uncomfortable situations. This is a two-pronged um, reason for this. Um, the first one is so they can support um, a friend or a peer who may have experienced trauma in the past, but also as a way of fostering healthier communities. You'll see this oftentimes considered as like engaging bystanders in healthy communities. So this is a content area that is also required by the law. 
Um, so these are the nuts and bolts of what's required by the state legislature. It's an expectation of all public school districts in the state to have this um, be implemented um, for all students in the K through fifth grade level. If you have further questions about the law at all, or if you're having questions about resources or needing support, please don't hesitate to contact us through our helpline, which is 1-800-871-7741. We're more than happy to chat and support you further. And that's my piece. I'm going to hand it back off over to you, Anne. All right, thank you so much. I will start sharing our presentation again. Cool. Try to go back. All right, um, I will talk about K to two and then I'll turn it over to Mrs. Crosby to talk about Wentworth. Uh, if anybody, if any of the parents here um, saw the presentation last year, it's we're using the same curriculum, which is called Safer, Smarter Kids. Um, it was vetted through a committee of people to make sure that we are a, uh, meeting all the mandate requirements, B, that it's age appropriate and that it's research-based and, um, and appropriate for kids. So when Andrew says that we are going to be teaching anatomically correct body parts, that does not mean that every five-year-old is gonna be learning all the parts of the body anatomically correct because that's not part of the kindergarten curriculum. So we wanna make sure that um, you as parents can look at this and see what the scope and sequence of this um, curriculum is. And last year, we were able to do two lessons with all K to five children. This year, um, kindergarten, first and second grade, our goal is to do five lessons. Um, and the scope and sequence is here for that. So it, it starts out with safety rules and your I mean it voice, which can be used anywhere from the playground to home. So it's not necessarily about any specific thing. It's just how to advocate for yourself and stand up for yourself and be able to say yes or no to somebody, whether it's, do you wanna play with me or you know, something more? So um, the other topics that we'll be covering um, are your trusted triangle. So who are the grownups that you can trust in your life? Um, what do you do with strangers? The think, feel, act guiding voice. Like if it makes you feel funny, don't, you know, and you don't wanna do it, say something and how to say it. It also talks about, um, you know, private parts are private and personal space and safe and unsafe touches. And the last one will be um, safe and unsafe secrets for um, K to five. So, I mean, K to two. Um, Molly is here as our school counselor. She will be delivering all these lessons with all three schools. And she's partnering with the PE teachers to do the first two lessons who part of the health curriculum as well to be able to advocate for yourself and stay safe. So um, that's why she is here tonight and you will know who will be teaching your children in the next few months. So Kelly, do you wanna talk now about three through five? Sure. So at Wentworth, it's very similar to um, what Ann just described at K2. Uh, the scope and sequence is meant to build upon, each, uh, upon itself and um, stay developmentally appropriate as the children get older. So really the emphasis remains on good citizenship and um, safety, personal space, using your voice. There is a digital citizenship component in beginning around the third grade, I think at the end of second grade and into third grade. And all of those pieces are very well embedded. And um, what we found when we did this curriculum, um, when we made the decision around this curriculum is that a lot of the components are already embedded into the work that we do as part of um, digital citizenship and the respect code at Wentworth and just part of being a, a school citizen. Um, so you can see the scope and sequence there. I won't run through each of them. Last year, as Ann mentioned, we were able to do two lessons per grade level. Um, we have a similar approach. Our health and PE teachers um, take part of the instruction, take lead on part of the instruction and then our school counselors through our pathways program implement the um, partner with them to implement implement additional lessons. So um, 
there are fewer lessons, but I think a bit more content in each one, um, just given that our third, fourth, and fifth graders' attention span can be a bit longer and we can have um, you know, full class lessons um, at the intermediate level. You're on mute, Anne. All right, so um, I believe, and I know this is, you all are on here about what are your kids gonna learn and who's gonna teach them this and what does it all mean? But I do want you to know that um, all of our staff have been trained. We all are meeting the mandate on that regard as well. And so um, we train every staff member to recognize signs, know what to do, know who to go to. Um, and so we wanna make sure every child is as safe as possible. Sorry, I went one slide too far, but um, you will be getting parent communication um, at the end of each unit that is taught with your children so that you can have questions that are that you can ask and find out what's been taught. Um, and so those will come home with your children as they as those lessons are rolled out. And unless anybody else on this panel has something to add to this, we can open it up to questions. So for all the parents out there, if there are any questions, you can raise your hand um, or put something yes. in the chat. I think you can just use the raise hand feature at, on the bottom of your screen and we'll be able to see that. And then we can promote you to um, be able to speak if you have any questions about what has been presented. Um, we will share this presentation in our weekly family news and we will um, share the recording as well. So. If if we've gone too quickly, or if there's something that you'd like to review, um, you'll have full access to this information in our upcoming family news. We'll also get it posted to the external websites so that you can access it either way. Not seeing any hands in the in the participants list just yet. I'll say a lot of the skills that are taught through these lessons are um, can certainly be uh, more globally applied in terms of self advocacy and using your voice and autonomy. So um, I think that there are many applications for the lessons that are learned. We'll just give one more minute or so. If anybody has any questions, just raise your hand or drop something in the chat for us. If not, we will just assume that this was so thoroughly presented that. Certainly sometimes you have questions that emerge in your mind after the fact. So we would invite you if that is the case for you to reach out to um, the building leader from the school your children attend. And certainly we can help answer some of those questions at any point. So feel free to reach out should they arise. And I know we didn't say this, but classroom teachers will also be a big part of this so they know what's going on. We have a question from Jeremy. Hi there. Can you talk? Yeah. yeah, I guess my only question is, is there any sort of preliminary conversations that we could or should be having with our children, like leading up to this curriculum being delivered? So they may have some context or feel a little bit more comfort in in hearing from hearing some of this terminology and some of these things from their parents before um, hearing about it in the classroom. Uh, I just know if you had any advice or recommendations there. That's a good question. And I'll answer a little bit on behalf of K2. And Molly, please or Jen, please jump in at any time and, and add to it. But um, one of the things that we're doing 
uh, with Molly is having her be a part of the PE classes before we start delivering these lessons so that she becomes known to the students and becomes a little bit more familiar and so she can and they can feel a little bit more comfortable with her. Um, and on behalf of parents leading the way, you know, there's nothing, you can't prevent too much. Like you can't tell your kids too much, right? So whatever you're comfortable with, is up to your family. And I don't know whether Andrew or Jen or Kelly Crosby have something else to say. Yeah, I can definitely say, I think, you know, as someone who teaches this content every single day, this content is best received when it's taught by the person who has the strongest relationship with the kids. And so I think that it's always best when this starts from home. And, you know, those can definitely be very scary and daunting conversations to start. Um, but really, you know, the best things you can start with is, you know, having a conversation with your kid about who are the adults that they trust at home, who are the adults that they trust at school, you know, talking about how they're the boss of their body and they get to decide who touches their body and who doesn't touch their body. Um, we're also, sorry, I'm always more than happy to, you know, give some tips and guidelines through our helpline if you're ever getting stuck or your kid asks a question, you know, it's seven o'clock at night and you need a response right then and there. Call our helpline. We're more than happy to, you know, help you in that conversation. Thank you for that, Andrew. That's um, such a great help. And the other thing that I would add to what um, Anne has already mentioned is that we are having, as she said, Molly go into the phys ed classes at K through two early to establish relationships. She's already been in all three of the buildings and has begun to build some relationships with students already. The phys ed teachers obviously have strong relationships with the students from the whole school year thus far being connected to them, if not longer. Um, and in addition, at the K through two level, um, when we transition back into uh, the regular classroom for um, lessons three through five, the classroom teachers will be a part of those lessons with Molly, which will be a nice way for the students to feel like they're really supported by adults that they're close to here at school. And I'd just chime in from the perspective of Wentworth and Jeremy, I really appreciate your question because um, I think that that support and partnership is truly what is um, best for kids. And that's, that's, that's our goal too. Um, we have a um, year long course at Wentworth called Pathways. And for one full trimester, the school counselors are delivering uh, developmental guidance lessons to all students. So our school counselors are currently working with the kids and are closely connected and have, um, have that relationship. So that's, it's kind of a natural progression. And a lot of the, the content that they're working through is closely tied to, um, to this work. This is just kind of like the next layer um, around advocacy, body boundaries, um, using your strong voice and um, being confident in, in yourself and who are your safe people. So that, that connection is great. And then similarly to K2, our um, PE health teachers meet with the kids once a week all year long. So um, it's, a, it's a great connection with some trusted adults. I was also curious if there's any like literature you might recommend, like age appropriate, like children's books that might be helpful to to like broach the topic and start a conversation. Um, and if maybe some of those resources could be shared out as you like share this so that, you know, it might be possible to, you know, share the that book and, and have that conversation a little bit before, you know, they they go into the curriculum at school. I can definitely, you know, chime in here. There's a really awesome website that was created um, as a response of this law called um, childrensafetypartnership.org. And I will share this with Anne to um, share with the rest of you all after this meeting. Um, that is a really great resource that has a list of books that are helpful, talking tips specifically for parents that you can use. Um, SARSM also has a um, vetted list of books that we use as part of you know, our programming that we um, always recommend for schools to use that I will also share with Anne that she can disseminate with the rest of the folks. So there are definitely resources out there. Um, and if there's something there that you are not finding, please don't hesitate to reach out and we're more than happy to, you know, compile some resources for you. 
That's perfect. We'll make sure that that link or all of the links are embedded in this presentation before we add it to the family news. So um, you'll have that access to that right away. Thank you. Are there any other questions from um, attendees? Thanks, Jeremy. Well, we'll stick around for a few minutes if there's other questions, but um, if there aren't, you can go read your kids a bedtime story and give them a kiss and say, we can't wait to see them tomorrow at school. And thank you for joining us. Thanks everyone, have a great evening.